we are starting a new chapter in the unit of uh, structural organization or cell and the chapter is cell cycle and cell division cell cycle and cell division we will start with cell cycle but before that what exactly are we going to discuss in this particular uh, chapter when a cell has to divide it has to prepare itself for the division and then ultimately it's going to divide so there are uh, growth changes which are going to take place accumulation of certain raw material which is going to take place so that the cell is ready to divide now how many times would a cell divide it is already decided or it is already there in the genetic information that the cell has like for example meristematic cells meristematic cells go on dividing that means they will continuously divide but there are certain cells after they have divided that means if they are formed by the uh, meristematic cells they don't normally divide they become permanent cells or the word which we use is called differentiated we'll use all those terms when we talk of cell cycle so there is a preparation phase there is actual division which is going to take place and when we use the word cell division we would talk about three division processes mitosis meiosis and amitosis but before that we are trying to understand the cyclic changes which take place in a cell so that would be the cell cycle and as the word is cycle that means it is going to take place in a regular manner this cell cycle is completed in two steps the first phase is known as interphase and the second phase is m phase interphase earlier was believed to be a resting stage it was believed that the cell is resting at this time and m phase is the multiplication phase where the cell is going to divide because we see the actual division of the cell taking place here certain events are taking place but here nothing is visible from outside so earlier scientists believed that this is a resting phase and this is the division phase but actually interphase is a very active phase and here the preparations so it is actually a preparative phase and this is the division phase interphase is further divided into three sub phases they are written as g1 or gap one phase second is s phase or synthetic phase and the third is g2 or gap 2 phase so interphase has three sub phases and then there is m phase m phase is again divided into two categories and these two categories or two phases are known as karyokinesis karyokinesis is division of the nucleus so this is nuclear division nuclear division is completed in four parts and they are written as prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase in these four phases the nucleus is going to divide that means karyokinesis karyon term is given to the nucleus and kinesis is splitting or breaking so here in these four phases the nucleus divides after the nucleus has divided now the cytoplasm is going to divide so that is known as cyto kinesis so in cell cycle there is going to be preparation in interphase that is in g1 s and g2 and then in the division phase first it's going to be the nucleus which is going to divide and then the cytoplasm divides as a result there would be two daughter cells which are formed so now let us represent this cell cycle 
and as it is a cyclic thing, we're going to represent it in a cyclic manner. Say this is the M phase. This is the M phase, that is the division, M phase. Then this entire is the interface. This is G1, then is S and G2. So if we have to represent this cell cycle in all these phases, then we'll have to label it like this. The things which are going to start from here, this point. So including G1, S, G2, that means still here. What is going to happen is preparation and that phase is known as interface. So this is interface and only this is the division phase. So this phase is actually the M phase which is where the cell is actually going to divide. Now, what all changes are going to take place here? A cell which enters the cell cycle, it is a typical diploid cell. Now, what all things are going to happen here? So, we'll write down the changes which take place in gap 1. In every phase, the cell prepares itself for the next stage. In gap 1 or G1 phase, the cell is going to prepare for S phase. What happens in S is DNA replication. We need to understand why the DNA should replicate. If a cell, if we are talking of human cells, say for example, 46 chromosomes are there. If the cell divides to form two daughter cells, both the cells should get the same information or complete information. And that complete information is on 46 chromosomes. So original parent cell is having 46. How can it give 46, 46 to 2? It has to make a copy of it. It is exactly like if I have one page of information and that information is given to two students, can I tear that page into two parts and give it to them? I can, but the information going on to the student is going to be half. Complete information, if is given, then I need to take photocopy of that page so that the complete information goes to one cell and the complete information goes to the other cell. This is what happens in S phase, that is DNA replication. So in G1, the cell prepares itself so that in the next phase, DNA replication can take place. So what all things are going to happen in G1? First, for DNA replication, are enzymes required? We have seen the process of DNA replication in detail when we study genetics, molecular basis of inheritance. Complete DNA replicates and there are enzymes, helicase, topoisomerase, DNA polymerase. So those enzymes are required here. And we know enzymes, most of the enzymes are proteins. So here protein synthesis has to increase. So protein synthesis increases. What kind of proteins are these? These proteins are basically enzymes required for DNA replication so that now all the enzymes are ready when the DNA is about to replicate. What is required for protein synthesis? Protein synthesis means transcription and translation. That means all three types of RNAs should be there. rRNA, mRNA, tRNA because they only will help in the process of transcription and translation. So here the second change is or second thing which takes place here is RNA synthesis increases. Are these processes active which are going to happen in further stages? They all require ATP. So third, ATP synthesis takes place. 
For DNA replication, raw material is required. Raw material means pentose sugar, nitrogen base, phosphoric acid, all these things are required. So here, raw material required, uh, required for S phase synthesized. Now when so many things are getting synthesized here, will the size of the cell increase? So here the cell size increases. That means there is growth which is going to take place. So next change is size of cell increases or we can say that cell growth takes place in this segment. Now the cell is ready to enter the next phase. Here the DNA replication is going to take place. So is it having everything for DNA replication to take place? Raw material ready, enzymes required for this DNA replication to take place, they are also ready and ATP is also there, ATP is also there. So everything is ready for the cell so that now it can enter into S phase and here DNA is going to replicate using all these things. So this is what happens in gap 1 or G1 phase. G1 or gap 1 phase. Now next we will talk about what happens in S and G2 phase.